if you can believe it call of dragons came out over a month ago at this point and there's been a ton of hype around this game since its launch and i'm planning on releasing my one month review of call of dragons very shortly so make sure you guys stay tuned for that if you're interested in my thoughts and opinions but as i was writing the outline to that video i started to wonder how good did call of dragons actually perform in its first month honestly the results shocked me which isn't easy to do as somebody who's already in the scene i already sort of know what to expect from the these city builder games and I was still surprised by the results so today we're going to go over everything from the popularity of Call of Dragons and how it's evolved since it came out as well as the first monthly reports of the revenue for Call of Dragons okay so the first thing I want to go over is the Google Trends data for Call of Dragons now you can see here I believe Call of Dragons came out on March 28th if I'm not mistaken that was when the first public servers came online and just a couple of days later the interest for the game peaked this is probably when the April marketing campaign fully kicked in April 1st and 2nd was a Saturday and Sunday so this was probably when a ton of marketing went out for the game and also there were probably a ton of content creators who were sponsored to post a 60 or 90 second ad within one of their videos and I've seen tons of content creators on YouTube who were sponsored by Farlight Games the creators of Call of Dragons so the interest peaked right around the launch which is as you would expect this is the case for pretty much every game that comes out the these days especially free to play games as people have no reason not to download them and give them a try if they look good and the ads for call of dragons have been generally really solid the production value is very good and then as you can see over the course of the month all the way up till may 3rd which was just a few days ago at the time of recording this the interest in the game or the Google trend has gone down from 100 down to 37. Now, this is nothing to be concerned about. This is the first month. Obviously, that first wave of players are going to try it. If they like it, they'll continue. If they don't like it, then they'll stop. Now, this is web search and this is worldwide. We can also change this to YouTube search and we can see what that looks like. And this is pretty much the same thing. Okay. People's interest peaked around April 1st through 3rd, and then the interest has dropped down to about 42. So the game is still a little bit better on uh, YouTube than it is in just general search results. But it's pretty much the same trend now these numbers pretty much mean nothing in a vacuum other than that the game loses interest over a month which again that is not unique to call of dragon so let's jump over here and put in rise of kingdoms now the reason that we're putting in rise of kingdoms as a search term and not as a video game is because the call of dragons video game term is not available right now like it just doesn't exist there's just not enough data so we are forced to use search terms which i think aren't as accurate as the actual game itself but it's still a pretty good estimation I would say now the reason we're also using uh, rise of kingdoms is because this is from the same team it's a technically a different group of developers you know rise of kingdoms is made by Lilith games and call of dragons is made by farlight but farlight games is essentially the Singapore branch of Lilith games that's at least my understanding of it so these two games are extremely similar and call of dragons is essentially the spiritual successor to rise of kingdoms and it's been improved as far as graphics as far as gameplay story all that stuff it's been if you want to know my thoughts about these two games I'm going to talk more about that in my one month review of call of dragons so subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for that but call of dragons for all intents and purposes is the sequel to rise of kingdoms and that makes this a really good comparison because it's from the same studio and if we take a look here we find something really really interesting so we'll go over the YouTube search first okay so again this is that worldwide search from just before the game's launch up until today at the time of recording this and the red line obviously is rise of kingdoms is it's significantly more popular before call of dragons drops then we see call of dragons drop right at the end of March and from that point onwards you'll see that of course call of dragons spikes up it is much more popular than rise of kingdoms for about the first week 10 days or so and then what we see is rise of kingdoms actually overtakes call of dragons for the popularity and you could see here that they kind of follow the same trend more or less and remember this is the Google trend for the course of a month and there are outside factors that could influence these numbers it's not just the game performance in a vacuum it is actually how the game is performing in the month of April right so keep that in mind but as we see here right around the end of April for the last week or two uh rise of kingdoms has overtaken call of dragons and is now more popular on YouTube 
YouTube search, which is really interesting for me. If we go over to the web search between these two games, what you're going to find is a very similar result. Okay. Call of Dragons comes out and it pops off. It is more popular for the first 10 or 12 days or so. And then rise of kingdoms really comes back and, and they are basically neck and neck all the way through until the last week or so, where it seems like rise of kingdoms is starting to break away a little bit. And again you'll see a lot of times these trends are very similar and they are in parallel to one another you know as one drops the other one drops as one goes up the other one goes up same sort of thing here and that's just the general market trend for mobile games during that day or that week most likely but I was really surprised to see that rise of kingdoms is actually more searched than call of dragons at this point one month after the game came out but what's even crazier is if you change this time frame to the past five years and the reason that five years is important is because in I think September it will be the five-year anniversary of rise of kingdoms it came out in 2018 if you can believe it I can't believe the game is that old already but if we click on the past five years you're gonna see something that's pretty shocking and that is that call of dragons peaked at its launch which we would expect but it wasn't as popular as January of 2022 for rise of kingdoms. Now this is wild because for rise of kingdoms, typically the biggest peaks that we see here correspond to massive marketing pushes. And I'm sure there was a big marketing push in December and January for rise of kingdoms, but usually it comes around the summertime, because if we take a look back in May and June of 2021, rise of kingdoms released the Viking civilization. And that's when the game popped off. If we look at this peak over here this was of course when the world was on lockdown so that is a no-brainer there this was just a global trend obviously this has really nothing to do with rise of kingdoms but this right here is a big marketing push for vikings and over here in uh june and july this was a big marketing push for um the egypt civilization and then of course this january bump here was just the holiday marketing this january bump was the holiday marketing as well uh, so the launch of call of dragons which again has included a huge marketing spend from far light games i've seen so many content creators sponsored by call of dragons there's been a ton of people who've been making content for call of dragons specifically for the launch and there's also been a ton of marketing on you know social media on instagram on facebook all the regular platforms that you would expect and even still call of dragons at its launch was not as popular as rise of kingdoms was in january of 2022 however it was more popular than the launch of rise of kingdoms itself so that happened uh, around here and i suspect that that is because well one google trends data has gotten better over the past five years right i mean that's like what this gray line is this note here but also as lilith made more money they were able to market the game even more aggressively and you could see that that paid off so what does this mean for call of dragons well typically for a game's launch that is like the most hype it's going to be for the first like six to 12 months that's usually the case so if we see the trend for this past month continue that's not a great sign for call of dragons i mean if rise of kingdoms which is five years old continues to outperform call of dragons in you know google search and in youtube search then that's a bad sign i mean typically again a new game has a lot of hype it has a lot of marketing around it and you would expect it to at least sustain for a month and that's not really been the case however you could also make the argument that if the peak for a uh, call of dragons launch was so high that it was literally higher than the holiday push for rise of kingdoms in this past year that means that you know this could actually be a low point we could look back five years from now and this launch could be a low point for call of dragons and it could continue to go significantly higher so there's two ways that you can look at this i expected call of dragons to be performing better at this point than it is right now right now it is technically lagging behind rise of kingdoms a five-year-old game but because the game is so new and maybe the marketing department is still trying to figure out the target audience this could be the low for the game and it could continue even higher over the next couple of years and we'll just have to wait and see how that works but next let's take a look at how much money did call of dragons actually pull in because that's really interesting right this game again massive marketing push this genre of game is known for making a lot of money if it can get the right players into the game and if we pull a little bit of information from a platform called sensor tower we can actually find out some really interesting stats when it comes to the revenue 
for call of dragons for their first month okay so don't worry about this graph on the bottom we'll take a look at that in just a moment but what's most important is how this page is broken down okay so you can see the time frame here you can see that right now we're looking at iPhone and iPad we're also looking at the United States which is typically a pretty good indicator of how much money a game pulls in because the United States is a massive market in terms of spend and we're looking at the grossing chart but again you could ignore the chart for now so for the Apple App Store what we can find out if we type in Call of Dragons here is that what they have listed is 10 million dollars for their last calendar month revenue that's what you're looking at here this is not for the time frame listed this is for the last calendar month revenue so on the Apple App Store Call of Dragons got 10 million dollars in revenue and 2 million downloads which is huge and we would expect that because of the marketing push there's a lot of people downloading the game now if we move over to the Google Play Store again we're looking at the United States we can do the same thing and we can see how much money the Call of Dragons pulled in for the Play Store and the income is as we might expect a little bit lower than the Apple App Store it seems like iPhone users typically spend a little bit more on mobile games than the Google Play counterparts so you could see here for Google Play Call of Dragons pulled in six million dollars last month and also two million downloads so we're looking at a total income between both platforms we have 16 million dollars in revenue which is huge four million people downloaded and i also want to point out that call of dragons did also launch a pc version and unfortunately because the pc version is owned and operated by Farlight, by Lilith. I think, it, I think it's funny that they actually have Lilith listed as the publisher here, but because that is private data, we will never know how many people downloaded the PC version. Now, I don't think they really pushed the PC version from a marketing perspective, but they absolutely got a lot of people to download the PC version after trying it on their phone. If you play Call of Dragons a ton, then you almost certainly uh, should be playing on PC. It's just a better experience. I'll talk about that in my one month review, but you can also make purchases on Call of Dragons on your PC. That's where I've made most of my purchases, if not all of them, and we'll never know that data. Okay. Uh, but with that being said, we also don't have the data for Rise of Kings which we're going to compare here in just a moment so keep that in mind the mobile revenue for the game is probably a vast majority but it's not all of it I would expect them to have made a few million dollars from the PC version as well so keep that in mind okay let's actually compare this to rise of kingdoms now because that's what we've been doing all video and if we type in rise of kingdoms what we're gonna find is shocking okay so here we are back on the Apple App Store for iPhone and you can see that rise of kingdoms last month made 13 million dollars that is absolutely insane and also paints a really interesting picture for call of dragons okay call of dragons first month on the apple app store performed worse than just a regular month for rise of kingdoms there was nothing special that happened in rise of kingdoms last month it was just a regular month and you can even see here the downloads far lower obviously because this game's been around for five years 600k is still a lot so good for you rise of kingdoms but i was really I, I was shocked honestly to see that rise of kingdoms actually made more money than call of dragons last month according to sensor tower and if we take a look over at the google play store uh, i think it's pretty obvious but we can expect uh, a similar thing here 700k downloads 7 million in revenue so 1 million more than call of dragons so in total rise of kingdoms made 20 million dollars last month call of dragons made 16 million dollars last month and we don't know what the pc breakdown is that's crazy and i think that this is probably disappointing for the call of dragons developers i mean that's just my gut feeling right now again you could look at this as oh my god their first month they made 16 million that's insane but as you saw from the Google Trends data that interest has declined over the course of the month so next month is that revenue going to still be there right like if it's if it's not performing as well as rise of kingdoms on its first month then next month if the interest is still lower the revenue will probably be even lower as well and remember the revenue that we just looked at rise of kingdoms pulling in 20 million last month that was just a regular month for rise of kingdoms so we can expect that next month it will probably be 
around the same mark whereas call of dragons may be actually lower which means the gap between those two is probably even bigger for this for may i don't know how to feel about that right obviously the only way we'll know how this will play out is if we take a look back in six to 12 months to see you know was this the peak of call of dragons or was this the low point of call of dragons right now it's looking like it's the peak but we have no idea what that is going to look like in the future now the other thing we can look at is obviously the chart that we're seeing right here okay uh, and this is the android top grossing chart and we could take a look between call of dragons and rise of kingdoms and if we pull this over a little bit you can see that the launch of call of dragons was right here so this was well it was actually a couple days before this but this is on april 2nd so this is the april data okay what you can see here is on the top grossing chart call of dragons actually goes up over time surpasses rise of kingdoms halfway through april uh and actually rise of kingdoms dips down and call of dragons continues to stay pretty high all the way up until the very end of the month it is still technically higher on the top grossing chart than rise of kingdoms which i don't know how that's calculated because we just saw that rise of kingdoms literally made more money so i don't really know how that works maybe this is calculating the amount per user or something like that like the average amount per user and maybe there's just a lot of whales in rise of kingdoms as opposed to call of dragons has a lot of people who are just spending you know two dollars five dollars something like that i have no idea how this is calculated but call of dragons is a uh, higher up right now at the top grossing chart now what i will say though is what we're looking at here the 68 that means call of dragons is 68th on the top grossing chart so that's actually not that good right for i mean for a game this is their first month and they peaked at 51 so they broke into the top 100 which is good it's a very highly competitive market but again for the marketing that they put out for this game i mean i i expected it to be higher now again this is android let's take a look at the apple app store and what we'll see is a pretty similar trend here okay so call of dragons uh the data starts to be tracked right on launch day which was march 28th and right away you can see it actually shoots up surpasses rise of kingdoms and then they kind of do a back and forth rise of kingdoms overtakes it and then it flips back to call of dragons about two weeks in and it stays pretty high up until a little bit of a outlier right here and at the very end for the apple app store rise of kingdoms is actually ahead so rise of kingdoms is higher on the top grossing charts than call of dragons right now which again to me is pretty shocking this is the first month of the game there's a massive marketing push there's all this hype there's all these players going from rise of kingdoms to call of dragons and maybe spending money there and rise of kingdoms is higher on the top grossing charts that to me is insane now remember we have to take all this data with a grain of salt the only people that have the accurate data for call of dragons and rise of kingdoms are the developers of these games and they're not going to release these numbers to the public because there is no incentive for them to do so why would they do that they would basically just be telling their competitors how they're performing and that makes no sense it doesn't matter also these companies are based in china and singapore so when they do some sort of investor or shareholder meeting that's all going to be in a different country so we're probably not going to see that here in the united states we probably just won't know that information for sure so we're going off of data that we do have access to and it seems to paint a really interesting picture that rise of kingdoms is making more money with fewer downloads and has a higher interest according to google trends so why might this be the case right why why is this happening okay well first of all this is the launch of call of dragons so everyone who's playing this game is new to the game whereas if we look at rise of kingdoms again it's been out for five years so there's a very loyal and dedicated fan base and there's also way more things in rise of kingdoms to spend money on and i know that sounds shocking if you play call of dragons there's plenty of bundles that you can spend money on here in the game but it's actually not that much compared to rise of kingdoms okay there's only a handful of bundles that are the great value and there's not as many systems in this game to spend money on you can spend money on heroes and, and getting good heroes you can also spend money on artifacts and leveling those up but there's no like equipment system there's no crystal technology system there's no armaments and inscriptions or formations there's none of that so there's actually not that many things to spend money on compared to rise of kingdoms which is probably why rise of kingdoms continues to make more money but the thing that's interesting to me is the google trends like why would rise of kingdoms be higher on google trends than call of dragons again there's there's a huge marketing push and there's a lot of hype around the game 
why would the trends be higher for rise of kingdoms and that I'm not sure uh, one thing that I can say is that this game I think is targeting a different demographic than rise of kingdoms which may sound weird if you're watching this channel you probably play rise of kingdoms but I really think that they were going for a different demographic and that is evidenced by the art style of the heroes okay I don't like the art style of these heroes that's my opinion I think some players really do like them I personally don't find these heroes that appealing uh, some of them are okay they're fine uh, but in general I think they're not great actually Garwood is a pretty is a pretty good one Emery's is okay but in general most of these heroes I find just visually unappealing that's my opinion and I'm a 28 year old man in the United States of America so for me the rise of kingdoms commanders are cooler looking they're based on historical figures and a lot of them are big jacked men who are literal warriors and there's really cute girls in the game like Art Amnesia okay so they're just more appealing to me visually in Call of Dragons this is more cartoonish it's more high fat fantasy it's more elves orcs humans type of thing and this reminds me of the how to train your dragon art style this is DreamWorks this is Pixar this is Toy Story right that's what this feels like to me and what that tells me is that they probably are targeting the younger demographic okay they know that people who play rise of kingdoms are people that look like me they look like Chiskel they look like legend Roni they look like Dragothian okay they're just late 20s early 30s dudes with jobs okay that's pretty much who plays rise of kingdoms and that's been working for them but for the kids for the younger audience maybe that's what call of dragons is really targeting and if that's the case then I think that uh, one the designs of the heroes definitely reflect that I think that that's fine right I think that these are very cartoonish and as a kid I probably would find them maybe a little bit more appealing but the problem with this is that kids don't have any money bro kids are broke okay if you are 10 years old you're asking your parents for allowance money you're asking your parents if they will spend money on call of dragons if it's your favorite mobile game so whereas in rise of kingdoms you have a 32 year old accountant who can drop you know five thousand dollars in a month just to win a kbk in call of dragons they may have a lot of the younger demographic which seems to be like what they're going for but they're 10 they're 12 years old they're 14 years old that's my assumption and i don't actually have this data but you know they can't spend that kind of money but here's the thing the developers of this game probably don't want to compete with rise of kingdoms they already have a game that's successful for the 20 and 30 year olds if they can produce a game like call of dragons that is similar but maybe for the teens to early 20 year olds it might make less money but if it makes even half as much as rise of kingdoms it'll still be their second most popular and highest grossing game in their library if you guys didn't know rise of kingdoms makes more money as far as last time i checked it makes more money than games like warpath than games like afk arena uh rise of kingdoms makes way more money than those games last time i checked so if they can sort of produce that same success with a different demographic then that essentially just makes their company overall more profitable which is great so overall I was surprised to see that based on the data that we have access to this game actually didn't make as much money as just a regular month in rise of kingdoms but if you look at the mobile gaming market as a whole I think the launch of call of dragons was very successful and if the developers can sustain this level of interest or even grow it obviously that would be ideal for them then call of dragons is going to be a massively successful game that you can expect to be popular for the next couple of years and like I said before I'm going to be releasing my one month review of Call of Dragons. So if you are interested to know exactly how I feel about the game in general, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you don't miss out. With that being said, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, I hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps out the channel a ton. It helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Call of Dragons players might see it. While you're down there, make sure you drop a comment. Let me know what you think of Call of Dragons. Are you surprised by the results that we see here in this video? Or is this sort of what you expected? With that being said, guys, Thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.